Okay, so we've got stocks and bonds in our portfolio. We have an option, don't we? We don't have to put all our money into stocks and bonds. We can leave it in cash. And cash we're going to call the risk-free rate. The risk-free rate is generally considered the U.S. Treasury uh, bills because they are uh, uh, guaranteed by the federal government. The federal government has the printing press. So we're going to use that as a risk-free rate here. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit before. Uh, when you look at the risk-free rate, it's absolutely on the vertical axis. There is no risk. So we put it all the way over there on the vertical axis, and then we have a choice between it and being out in the ocean in the volatile assets, the mean variance portfolio being the uh, one that has the least amount of risk, uh, and then, of course, 100% stocks being the one that has the most amount of volatility at the top, uh, which has the most amount of return, but also has the most amount of volatility or risk in it. Uh, so we have to choose between those. If you t make a line between the risk-free rate and the tangent to the um, uh, stock bond balanced uh, scenario, we end up with a, a capital market line. We call it the capital market line. And your choice really is between being in the risk-free rate or some sort of uh, combination of being risk-free and the various um, uh, rates of return on the efficient frontier. If you take the balanced fund approach, you would put some money into the um, uh, risk-free rate and some money into stocks. That will give you the uh, uh, balance of where you get your uh, risk-free versus uh, invested balanced fund capital market line. So that is where you would naturally find a tangent between uh, putting risk-free as a possible class in the asset category and your stock and bond fund. That's where you would get a balanced fund between risk and reward. Uh, obviously, there can be multiple um, capital market lines. Uh, when a risk-free asset is available and the efficient frontier is identified, uh, we choose the capital al allocation line with the steepest slope. In other words, the capital allocation line is the one that has the tangent to the most efficient frontier. And, of course, we can have one below that if we wanted to, but we don't. We want that capital market line to be as efficient as possible. Uh, next, we're going to get into expected and unexpected returns. So if you can keep in mind, we have a capital market line that is uh, anchored on one side by the risk-free rate, anchored on the other side as the efficient market frontier for a given set of portfolios. Uh, now we have our capital market line. Now we're going to talk about expected and unexpected returns.